Welcome to this video on fiber reinforced plastic repair where we're going to focus specifically on thermoplastics. Fiber reinforced plastics can also come in the thermal set variety, which we'll discuss a little bit later, and uses a different technique for repair. But this video will focus specifically on the thermal plastic variety of fiber reinforced plastics. Fiber reinforced plastics are used all over the place in so many different materials. But specifically in automotive, they are used in areas such as radiator supports and rebars for bumpers. Those are considered structural components that would be unsafe to repair. But there are circumstances where fiber reinforced plastics may be used in other areas of the vehicle that might be repairable. The challenge or problem with fiber reinforced plastic parts is that the repair is very difficult when it is a thermal plastic as it's difficult to reproduce the methods that the manufacturer used when producing the plastic part originally. These parts, if they are non-structural, may be repaired, but the quality of the repair may not be as good as the plastic was in the beginning. So do be aware of that. So the most common procedure when you do have a damaged FRP component that's a thermal plastic is to in fact replace the part. This video is going to demonstrate the subframe repair on a Husqvarna dirt bike. Uh, and this is going to show you basically the procedures that can be used for any type of thermoplastic FRP. These are the two damaged parts we're going to focus on repairing in the video today. We can see how the ends have been snapped off. Fortunately, we do have the ends so we can reattach those. Let's start off by defining the term FRP, which stands for Fiber Reinforced Plastics. These can include both thermoplastics and thermosets. Fibers are added for extra strength and can be composed of either glass or carbon. However, less commonly, they may include nylon or many other materials. Here we can see a quick review of the difference between thermoplastics and thermosets. If you're not familiar with the difference between the two, maybe take a moment to read through these. Otherwise, we'll carry on with the repair process. Our biggest concern when identifying plastics for repair is whether the plastic is a thermoset or a thermoplastic. We've already identified this plastic as a thermoplastic, and we do that by looking at the ISO code circled here or by doing the float or grind test. We can take the ISO code and break it down and look up what each of these items in the code means. So we can see that this plastic does contain carbon fibers, but that is very different than a carbon fiber material. Traditionally, carbon fiber is in fact an epoxy resin with carbon fibers within it. So we will repair this as a thermoplastic rather than a thermoset epoxy. The first step in repairing anything is to always wash the parts. These parts were washed with soap and hot water prior, and in fact they were quite dirty so they were washed multiple times. And then following the soap and water wash, we should always use some type of solvent degreaser to remove any contaminants that may not have been removed by the soap and water. We have to be very cautious when using any type of solvent on plastic as solvents can damage certain plastics. Additionally, solvents being flammable can be a hazard. As we spray and clean our plastic components, static electricity may build up and that rubbing process causing static electricity could in fact cause a flash fire with our solvent-based cleaners. The cleaner being used here is appropriate for plastic and is based on isopropyl alcohol. And although isopropyl alcohol is flammable, it has a very low flash point, meaning it evaporates typically before it has a chance to potentially catch fire. Make sure that you clean the panels until there's no more debris remaining as that could affect the quality of the repair. And this is an example of a failed repair. Now this failure was not caused by cleaning, however, poor cleaning would have the same results where the repair material does not actually bond to the substrate. You can see the repair material is very strong, but it just simply did not bond to the panel that was being repaired. These are the tools that will be used to prepare the panel for the adhesive repair. We have an angle grinder, die grinder, belt grinder, sandpaper, drill, and drill pit. And we want to make sure that we use these in such a way that we do not put too much heat into the panel. That can happen when the tools are used at too high a speed or the abrasives are worn out. Any excessive heat will in fact melt the thermal plastic material, which then creates a melted surface that does not allow repair material to bond to, which will then of course cause a failed repair. 
You want to use approximately 80 grit for your abrasive and we want to make sure that we abrade all the way around the repair area approximately one to two inches for this type of repair or further on a larger cosmetic repair we also want to make sure that we cove out the repair meaning we open up that repair sometimes you'll hear the term v it out which in fact is a poor term. We don't want to create a V opening or notch in the repair. That sharp edge from the V can be detrimental to the repair. So we want to in fact open that repair up gently so that we eventually abrade down towards the center. In the case of this repair, we've also drilled around the repair areas, the cracks. This can allow for a little extra strength as the repair material penetrates through the entire substrate. If you do have a crack, it's a good idea to drill the end of the crack. This can prevent the crack from spreading even after the repair is made, just through the vibration of the panel. It's important that you have the appropriate repair materials on hand. The ones seen here are commercially available in different brands and ensure that you not only have the proper material, but also the proper adhesion promoter to bond to the thermal plastic. Your repair materials are not very likely to bond to the thermal plastic without the proper application of an adhesion promoter. There are products available on the retail market. Ensure that they are, however, compatible with the type of plastic you are working with. Many of these materials will not bond to thermal plastics. Once the grinding and sanding processes are complete, we will have to set the panel up for repair. This particular crack did not break this piece off, however it is out of position. Here I'm using aluminum tape to hold the part in place so that it does not move during the repair. Aluminum tape is an excellent choice for this as it will stick to the panel well. However, once the adhesive is cured, the tape will remove quite nicely from the panel. It will not stick to the dried adhesive. If you are not using aluminum tape, you can use other means to hold the panel together, such as vice grips or clamps, provided you do not damage the panel with those tools. Once the part is laid up in a position that we are happy with and the part is cleaned, then we'll move on to applying adhesion promoter. Make sure that you follow the proper directions for the adhesion promoter you're using. The purpose of the adhesion promoter is to do just that, aid in adhesion of the repair material. Without the adhesion promoter, your repair material will not bond to the thermal plastic. The thermal plastic has a certain amount of surface energy which, when inappropriate, uh, will prevent bonding of your repair material. Applying adhesion promoter changes the surface tension temporarily, similar to the old process of flame treating plastic or the corona treatment used to uh, change surface energy on plastic. Apply the product appropriately, which is typically one or two very light coats, and allow the product to dry the appropriate amount of time. If you wait too long, you will have to reapply the product. Our two component cartridge tube has been equalized and purged. Now I'm going to make sure that I prepare some of this mesh backing material to reinforce the repair. So I'm going to cut these into appropriate sizes a little bit larger than repair. And then I'm going to apply some of the repair material over the damaged area. I want to apply this somewhat generously, making sure that I push the repair material into all of the damaged areas. This particular product is fairly fast setting, so I do need to watch the time on it or it will start to set up before I'm finished working with it. I can use a spreader, a brush, or my gloved finger to apply the repair material to the desired area. Again, that one to two or two to three inches, however far beyond the repair area. Make sure we do not apply the material past our grinder or sander marks and where we apply the adhesion promoter or it will not stick. And that edge could start to lift, causing a failure of the repair. Once I get that first coat on, then I apply our backing material here, this nylon mesh, to the repair areas. For most types of FRP that are thermoplastics, one layer is suitable. However, you may want to apply multiple layers of the mesh. And then we apply more repair material over the mesh. As we apply more repair material over the mesh, make sure again we are applying enough material so that we can spread it out covering the mesh completely and going beyond the repair into our prepared areas. This uh, on the inside being our structural repair doesn't necessarily have to look magnificent so long as it fits the panel. In fact, these are often best left when they are not very sightly. If we can leave the repair strong in here, that's the most ideal goal. Keep in mind, you do not want to build up too much strength. If we over strengthen a certain area, it could allow another area to break in the future that could be harder to repair. 
Sometimes having this area refail again may be an easier repair than having somewhere else damaged on the panel if you do have to re-repair the same panel in the future. As we spread this repair material over, uh, you can actually use the backing from that nylon mesh to spread over top of the repair while it sets or even waxed paper. And then that can be pushed over to smooth out the repair. Do not remove that backing material if you use it until after the product is dried. This tab has been snapped off, which makes for very difficult repair. The nylon backing material will not work very well here as there are clearance issues. So in this particular area, metal has been inserted as a reinforcement into the damaged area. The application of the two component repair material here is very similar to what we just saw with the cracked part. We are applying the two component repair material to both halves and then we'll fit the two halves together. This application needs to be somewhat generous and when we apply this repair material make sure we cover or prime all of the bare surface areas and cover any exposed fibers in that substrate. That will ensure that we have a strong bond all the way through the repair area. Once we are ready to apply it here, we can use our aluminum tape or other means to hold the part in position while it cures. Again, make sure that the part is in the correct position. If the part is not in the correct position, it can be very challenging to get the part to fit after and may actually require you to break and redo this repair. You wanna make sure that it sets in the correct spot. As we are doing this, our reinforcement is of course those metal tabs, so we are not using that nylon mesh. Again, if we had nylon mesh in here, it would create clearance issues when the part is fit to the motorcycle after the repair. This is again a two-sided repair, and we can kind of repair both front and back sides simultaneously, but we may need a little more repair material later to finish the cosmetic repair on the front if you so choose to have a finished cosmetic repair. If you do not worry about the cosmetic repair, then again, we want to make sure that we apply enough material here to build up appropriate strength on that repair area. We are spraying the repair area or material out on the front of this part to make sure that again, it is not too much of a blemish for that final product. You can sand this material once it cures, and that's one of the benefits of this type of material is it can be used both for uh, reinforcement, structural repair, and as a finishing material that can also allow a cosmetic finish on the front when we're done. Some of these materials do not sand well or at all, meaning you might need a second two component repair material to finish your damaged area. Otherwise, you may not get a very nice finished area on that front side. After the repair material has set on the back side, we can remove that aluminum tape. Again, do not remove the aluminum tape until the product is fully dried. Then we can look at the front side and prepare the front side as necessary for the application of the same repair material. After the repair has dried on the back side, we can remove the aluminum tape. Again, do not remove the aluminum tape until the repair material has thoroughly dried. We have prepared the front side similarly with grinding and sanding and applied our adhesion promoter allowing it to flash off the appropriate amount of time. Now we're applying the repair material to the front side. If this is to be a cosmetic repair, we want to make sure that we apply enough material to spread it out and work that repair into a, uh, an acceptable finish. You could add nylon mesh if this were not to be a cosmetic repair, if you're really only worried about the structure of it. However, with nylon mesh, it will be rather unsightly on this front side. Spread the repair material out as necessary before the material starts to set up and dry on you. This can be very tricky. The better you spread the repair material out, the less sanding you'll have afterwards. However, we don't want to be too cheap with the repair material. If we do not put enough on, we will have to apply a second coat afterwards following the same process of sanding and grinding. And you will need to apply adhesion promoter if the product is to be applied back over any of the bare substrate. If you're to apply this two component product back over itself only, you do not require adhesion promoter. After the repair material has dried the appropriate amount of time, you can sand it for cosmetic appearance. This is probably the most time consuming part. What you're seeing right now are various stages of repair. We can see a finished section right here. We can see a section that is currently being sanded and below there was a section that was unsanded. These are the various stages of repair and it's up to you how far you want to finish it. This is the appearance of the back side of the repaired panel compared to an undamaged panel. Here we see two very similar subframes with similar damage. The top one we can see the end is cracked off similar to what we saw earlier in the repair and the bottom one has a crack through the panel. 
We can also see the finished product here where the end has been rebuilt, it was missing. So we were able to use the repair material to replace that. And then we can also see on this particular image where that crack has been repaired and then is ready to be refinished if someone wanted to paint this panel to match the factory appearance. Here we'll see the repaired subframe mounted on the motorcycle. The key with any repair is to take your time, be meticulous with all the steps and all the small details. With the FRP repair, taking your time with the sanding, the grinding, the adhesion promoter, applying the repair material and the sanding will certainly ensure you have success. I do want to touch on plastic welding, as plastic welding is a great process for thermal plastics. However, plastic welding does not work well typically with fiber reinforced plastics for a few reasons. One, the heat from the plastic welding may burn the fibers in the FRP, and two, the plastic welding rod that's conventionally used on plastics is usually either for polypropylene or ABS plastics and may not stick to the particular substrate you're working with. Good luck with your repair.